Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining my talk. It's great to be able to talk to you about the Cert Manager project. This year it's virtual, but hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll all be able to meet up again soon and meet in person. I'm going to be talking to you today about all the various ways in which you can use Cert Manager beyond Ingress. I'm Matt Bates, I'm from Jetstack. We're the original creators of the project, and together with now 280 contributors in the community, We've got Cert Manager to where it is today. Cert Manager is effectively a Kubernetes add-on or extension. It extends the Kubernetes API and adds support for certificates and certificate authorities. It means that you can manage X509 TLS certificates. That's the complete life cycle, the issuance and renewal, and use those certificates in your applications. It has wide adoption and lots of contribution from the community. And as of last year, we donated the project to the CNCF. So it's now part of the sandbox. It's got integration with a variety of different public and private PKI providers, both in the core of the project, but also as so-called external issuers. And we're gonna look at that in the talk today. Briefly, how does Cert Manager work? As I said, Cert Manager is an extension or an add-on. It provides a number of additional resources, so-called custom resources, CRDs and provides them to the on top of the Kubernetes API. These represent certificates and certificate authorities. We can refer to that as an issuer. This provides first class support for those in the Kubernetes API and you get all of the advantages of being able to manage those resources declaratively, much like you manage pods and deployments. So manager has a controller that manages the lifecycle of those resources and importantly is able to provide the automation of those certificates, automating the fetching of those certificates and importantly, the renewal of those as well. Cert Manager is most commonly used to secure ingresses. And you can see here, it's really quick and easy to add a TLS certificate to an ingress, simply by adding, in this case, the, the annotation, which references where you want the certificate to be obtained from. So in this case, it references the Let's Encrypt staging issuer that I have in my cluster. Um, and it also requires you to specify uh, the secret name there as well. So the secret will store the certificate that's obtained from Let's Encrypt in my ingress cert. Really, really simple. How does this work under the hood? Well, Cert Manager watches for ingresses using its ingress shim component as part of the Cert Manager controller. And it's then able to create a certificate which is backed by a point in time certificate request, which encodes the certificate signing request, which it then submits to your CA of choice. So in my particular case, it was the, the Let's Encrypt staging endpoint. And that's the point at which Cert Manager is able to automate the ACME flow. There's additional resources that you can see there, the order and the, the challenge, but effectively all of that is automated for you. And it results in a signed certificate from the certificate authority, which is placed into a secret and then consumed by uh, your application. In the case of an ingress, of course, that's most likely to be an ingress controller, something like Nginx, for instance. And it's then able to serve your application securely. You can also use these resources more directly. So the ingress shim automatically provides that automation just based on some annotations that you add to the resource. But you can indeed tap into the resources that the Cert Manager provides, that is that of the certificate and the certificate request. So the certificate effectively is more of the more human readable, if you like, representation of the certificate. And that's the one that you can see and use and use the API for, and indeed use the shell. The certificate request is like a point in time request that's made for an X509 certificate from an issuer. And this is typically consumed by, as I said here, by managed, by controllers or other systems. You see the cert manager controller there is responsible for reconciliating these certificate and certificate request resources. But of course, there are lots of other certificates to manage in Kubernetes. It's not just the ingress certificates. There are many certificates across a cluster typically. Uh, that you may wish to automate using Cert Manager. And I've just highlighted some of these, and we're going to talk about a number of these different use cases in this talk. 
ingress, as I mentioned, pod to pod, which might be without, with or indeed without a service mesh. And we're going to look at both in this talk today. You may also wish to secure a cluster and the control plane and the data plane. There are also a number of webhooks that you may have that are used for admission that you wish to secure. We're going to look at how Cert Manager can be used in almost all of these cases. We often get asked in the community uh, how you can use Cert Manager in order to uh, secure, you know, pod to pod communications, Effect effectively that kind of east west traffic uh, in, in, a, in a cluster. Uh, without a service mesh um, at, at this stage. And this is particularly useful if actually what you've got is a really small handful of microservices um, and, you know, you can, uh, you can really just use, you need certificates, you, know, you need those to be automated and you want to be able to consume those in your application. Uh, and this, you know, would be preferable to the operational complexity of having um, that kind of full uh, mesh. So here's an example of actually how you can, use a cert manager certificate resource um, directly. You know, so you can go and create uh, this in source control, uh, of course, and apply it you know, directly via CI CD um, to your cluster. And cert manager will um, automate the issuance of this certificate and put it into a secret that you can then consume um, in, in an application in a pod. And so a couple of uh, things to point out here, um, making this, uh, this particular example is going to be a very short-lived certificate. Uh, we're going to uh, put it into a secret um, that I can specify, uh, much like we did with the ingress, and you know, can then consume that, that secret in my, in my application, you know, really as a set of files you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a volume mount um, that I can then sort of put into my application and start serving TLS. Um, some DNS sans here. Uh, and I'm also making reference to uh, my CA, this is going to be like a, a private CA, so this would obviously not um, be uh, a public CA if, if you just really want something local to the cluster. And we're going to see how this, um, how you can sort of set this up in, in some slides to come. Here's a bit more YAML that shows how you can effectively take the secret and then make it available in a volume and a volume mount. And the files will, will be available to this ping service or this ping pong service at the mount path, Etsy, SSL, private. So there you go. There's the, the key pairs and the CA uh, certificate uh, as well. There's a really, really simple way of being able to use the underlying, if you like, resources in Cert Manager programmatically. And we've got a number of end users that do uh, exactly this at scale. In the... You may also want to uh, have certificates obtained from a private. CA, so rather than just a public CA such as Let's Encrypt, if you're um, trying to um, get certificates for that use case where you're trying to secure pods that are communicating within a cluster, you may wish to use a private CA for that purpose. And there's actually two issues that, that are built into Cert Manager that are really useful and convenient for this purpose. They're the self-signed issuer, or so-called self-signed issuer, and the CA issuer. And you can see here what I've taken a number of snippets of YAML which show you how you can combine these resources in order to create what is effectively is a self-signed CA. There on the right hand side you can see there is a certificate called my CA. I've used the is CA flag to denote that this is going to be a CA certificate. It's got a 90 day duration, specified the secret, the common names and subjects, and a number of other properties that you can specify and an issue a ref. In this case I'm referring to that sort of self-signed uh, key that I generated there on the left-hand side. This is just sort of an out-the-box, relatively simple, if you like, private CA that you can configure using Cert Manager. And it's a little known. People don't know that you can do this. You can also, of course, plug in, um, if you like, a more robust and um, more secure um, private PKI, if you wish. And so we've got a number of options here, both built into the core of the project, but and also um, those that are external to the project as well, so-called external issues. So you can use Vol, you can use Small Step. They've got an Acme, an Acme CA server. Um, you can also use the cloud providers. So we've got support for Google's Certificate Authority service. And there's also an external issuer for AWS's PCA 
And if you're in a more of an enterprise environment, uh, you can also integrate it with Venify and there's a, an issuer for TPP. So in that previous example, we were looking at how you could use the uh, certificate resource in Cert Manager in order to obtain a serving certificate. But how about if you wanted to use Cert Manager uh, to do um, interpod, uh, you know, pod to pod, mutual TLS, and you know, obtain both you know, a, a serving certificate, but also a client certificate. So I've got an example here of a you know, really, really simple example of a ping service and a pong service. And um, we open sourced this lab. If you wanna go and find it, for you know, follow the link down the slide, um, it sort of hooks up, uh, you know, this ping pong service, um, simple go binary that you can also use in some of your, your own examples. In this um, example, we have is the two services I said, ping contacts pong, verifies itself with the client's uh, um, Pong replies, it, that's secured using the server um, and yeah, it actually replies back to the browser so you can see the, the contents of the Pong certificate. And importantly here, both Ping and Pong, they're only going to trust certificates that are signed by the same uh, root CA. So how does this look? Um, how does this look um, in, in YAML? Well, we have, uh, as before, we have the, we use this certificate resource and we've now got um, one, so we've got basically two certificates, we've got both the ping and the pong. And you can see here um, in the certificate resource, we're able to uh, specify the, the key usages um, that get passed down, you know, when, when creating the certificate. And so, you know, you can sort of use here both client or server auth um, and set those uh, appropriately. And both of the certificates here, both for both Ping and Pong, use the same issuer. So they're pointing at that uh, private CA um, that I uh, created um, on the previous slide or showed on the previous slide. So using the certificate resource in this way, um, you can you configure it to create certificates um, in order to do things like, for instance, um, you know, authentication to a database. And so we've um, got this blog post uh, that one of our team put together uh, in which we used, you know, we, we talked through how you can use Cert Manager to create certificates for uh, client authentication with MySQL. Uh, and there's been lots of examples. We've also seen the community uh, of where users have, uh, have used it exactly um, for uh, this type of purpose. Rather than manually having to create and manage those certificate resources for applications in the Cert Manager project, we have developed a CSI driver in order to make it um, even more seamless. The very neat thing about the CSI driver is that it means that private keys can remain node local. Uh, so rather than being uh, put into a Kubernetes secret, uh, as is the case with some of the integrations that we've already seen, um, in this particular case, you can keep uh, the private key to the node where it's generated. Um, by the CSI driver, it means you can provide unique key and certificates for each of your applications. So if you're using a replica set as part of a deployment, you've got many pods, each of those pods can have its own unique identity. Um, and that identity, that X509 identity can be obtained at the point uh, of application runtime. It also means that these certificates are renewed uh, much like the other use cases, Cert uh, Manager will uh, know when to renew the certificate and provide a means to do that for you. So this just makes it really super simple in order to get those certificates to each of your applications. How does the CSI driver work? Well, the CSI driver resides on each of the nodes in the cluster, uh, is deployed as a daemon set, and just stepping through how it works. First of all, the pod is scheduled to a node. The Kubler, of course, is responsible for coordinating um, the, the runtime. It works with the node uh, driver, this the CSI driver, by calling the node publish volume. At that point, the driver kicks in and it uh, generates a private key and it generates a certificate request. That's a certain manager certificate request, which 
yeah, they effectively encodes uh, a CSR. Um, that's that certificate request is uh, submitted to the API server uh, on your behalf. The CR is then reconciled and a certificate is obtained um, from your kind of CA of choice. And that certificate is then to give for the private key is written to the nodes file system. And then that's bind mounted into uh, each, each of the pods, obviously into each of the relevant um, pods. The driver will keep track of all of the uh, certificates and it will also be responsible for any renewals. And uh, if at any time or if and, and when, of course, um, the pod is terminated, um, then it will also uh, send out a call to the driver. The Kubelet will send out a call to the driver in order to make sure that the uh, certificate and the key are deleted. So this is a really seamless um, automated way uh, of getting those identities. You can also use Cert Manager to secure Kubernetes webhooks. The webhooks are used for a sort of dynamic admission control, used for a variety of purposes for, for, for instance, mutating resources or validating resources um, as they are admitted to the API server. And typically used, for instance, for applying default values or enforcing policy using you know, the likes of OPA, Kaverno. And also for ensuring that the resources that are submitted um, are semantically valid. And in fact, Cert Manager uses this um, itself. Uh, you'll notice there's a component called the Cert Manager webhook that does exactly this. Now, if you're doing using this as, a, as an extension point, uh, you want to be sure that when you are submitting these resources from the API server to those webhooks, that it's secure and that also you can be sure of uh, the uh, the destination to make sure that nothing nefarious is happening um, with it being mutated or or validated in in, in, a, in a way that you would not expect. So you can use Cert Manager in order to secure those endpoints and secure those provide the means provide the certificates for those endpoints. And there's a couple of annotations or few annotations, shall I say, uh, where you can um, do this. One is inject CA from, so measure IO, inject CA from, you can reference a certificate. Um, and you can also inject it from a secret and you can also inject the API server CA certificate uh, as well. This uses a component in search manager called the CA injector. It's responsible for watching in on these annotations and then providing the means to be able to automate, automate it for you. One example of where this is used um, is in cluster API. So this is an example of a command that I ran recently uh, when spinning up a local cluster API cluster. Um, you're using cluster CTL, as you can see. And one of the very first things that it does, is it fetches the various different providers and then it installs Cert Manager. And that might look a little curious if you, but uh, if you dig a little bit deeper, once the cluster API is, is up and working and you run kubectl get certificates. And specifically, you look in the uh, Kaki webhook system namespace, you will see there are a number of certificates that are used um, as serving certificates um, for those webhooks. Now, service message becoming increasingly uh, popular and a number of users in the community are asking how they can integrate Cert Manager and also all its various different CA integrations into the mesh so that those workload certs, the control plane certs and data plane certs are provided um, from their sort of uh, provider of choice. Now, if you think about what Service Mesh provides, it's a really, really rich capability to have consistent observability, uh, security, and so various reliability features that are built into the platform. So rather than the developers having to build this themselves, it's transparent and it's provided for them. And this can be you know, highly convenient. Rather than services contacting each other directly, so I've got an example here of service A and service B, um, these microservices or services communicate via a proxy and the proxy can be dynamically programmed 
uh, based on the resources that reside in the control plane. And so what's great about this is that you can provide all of that capability in the proxy rather than having to be implemented in the application itself. And quite often, most of these meshes, um, so most of which are based, of course, on Envoy, um, have the ability to automatically provide uh, MTLS um, between uh, proxies in the mesh. So you get effectively transparent uh, MTLS between all of your services, which is highly convenient. A number of service meshes um, out there in the open source have integrations with um, Set Manager. So Linkerd, of course, a service mesh that's in the CNCF, um, has had the ability to integrate Set Manager for some time. You can provide it a trust anchor and, and an issuer certificate and private key, and these can all be automated using Set Manager. Um, and thereafter, Linkerd has a component built into it responsible for uh, effectively uh, automating the provisioning of the leaf certificates and the renewal of those leaf certificates with you know, relatively short short lifetimes. So you get a full automation uh, of that, both the bootstrapped certificates um, that are used, the trust anchor, and also the leaf certificates uh, as well. So it's a really good combination putting the two together. Um, Istio has had the ability to plug in custom CA certificates into its, into its Citadel for some time. You can reference uh, a CA key pair um, using a Kubernetes secret. But we've been working with the Istio folks in order to more fully integrate set managers so that you can actually have the workload certificates obtained from set manager itself. And of course, that's advantageous because you can then start to take advantage of all the different issuers that Set Manager has in its community. And what this involves is effectively replacing the Citadel, that's that registration authority, um, with Set Manager. We can create you know, certificate requests and have those fulfilled, said by those different providers. Uh, there's also some integration which is much more experimental, and uh, it's been more recently released, that enables Istio to use the Kubernetes Certificates API. And uh, we're working with them on that integration uh, as well. And finally, the, the third example I have here is the Open Service Mesh Project, OSM. Uh, we've been working with to plug in Cert Manager, and they've had pluggable certificate management from the get-go. And they've got their own built-in component, I believe, support for also uh, Vault and also Azure's Key Vault. Um, but yeah, if you want to use Cert Manager, there is an integration there and enables you to uh, plug it in um, and it will, that component will be responsible for creating and managing uh, certificate requests um, for the workloads that run within the mesh. So a variety of different integrations there that enable you to plug into Cert Manager and in turn, of course, all of its integrations that it has. Um, with different issuers, be it those that are built into the core of the project, but also those that are external to the project as well. So the manager can also be used to uh, secure the Kubernetes control plane and the nodes um, that form, form a cluster. For, now, for anyone that's tried setting up um, PKI and Kubernetes, they'll know that there are a lot of certs. Um, client certs, service certs of all different flavors. And uh, it can get quite complex trying to manage this. I know from doing this in the very early days of provisioning a Kubernetes cluster, well, uh, now things have changed. We can use the magic that is KubeADM or KubeAdam. Uh, it's here to the rescue, really. It provides auto-generated, auto-renewed control plane certs. Um, by default, this uses like a self-signed certificate. So if you're happy to accept that it's uh, not, not uh, rooted, if you like, in your, in your existing chain of trust, um, then you can really just use this sort of as, as is. Um, but if you're in an enterprise where you need those certificates um, to be rooted in some kind of existing PKI system, uh, then there are a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, at least one way is using the external CA mode. Um, this enables KubeADM basically to generate the private keys and then generate the CSRs and then let you fulfill effectively 
um, the certificate signing requests yourself. And so we've built a Jetstack and integration um, between QBDM and, and Venify uh, just to demonstrate that you can use this. And since we actually did this, this command so it's generate CSR has, has actually gone GA. So how about provisioning of certificates for the, the Kubernetes nodes? On the previous slide, we saw how you can use QBDM to uh, provision certificates for the control plane and how you can customize that and use you know, an external, uh, external CA provided um, certificates. But how about the nodes themselves? Well, QBDM uses the Kubernetes certificates API and um, that one, uh, that's actually been built into Kubernetes for some time. Uh, it's only recently, I think 118, and it, that kind of G8, so there's now like a, a V1 uh, of that API. So through a process of bootstrap, uh, the Kubelet makes a certificate signing request. Uh, that, that's this resource here to the API server. And that certificate signing request, um, as you can see here on the slide, has a, has a sign a name and those, that's now a required field um, as of, as of uh, V1. And those signers are actually built into the Kube controller managers. That one there, the Kube API server client Kubler signer that's built into the controller manager. And that would automatically basically approve um, you know, the signing of those um, certificates. But you can also configure it, in fact, to, to sort of have like a manual approval um, that you may want to provide um, using you know, something like kubectl. So having a signer name means that you can plug in uh, also other signing mechanisms uh, in that, you know, and uh, in the CERN manager project, we've actually worked on some experimental signers. You can see a link to a couple of them uh, there. Um, one is the signer CA, so it's effectively like a local CA um, and also an integration um, with Venify using its uh, kind of open source vCert library. In the next release of CERN manager, we're actually going to be adding uh, support or the next releases should I say you're going to be adding support uh, for the Kubernetes certificates API so that means you'll actually be able to use all the various cert manager issuers um, in order to sign a certificate signing request just like this um, and that'll open uh, up you know open the project up to being able to support you know kind of many more uh, use cases so we'll support the certificate request that's built into the project um, and certificate signing requests that's in the core of the project, core of the open source Kubernetes project. Uh, and over time, we'll look to sort of more fully embrace that core type uh, in the project. So to summarize, there's lots of ways in which you can use Set Manager beyond Ingress. There are many use cases that stretch far and wide, really across the ecosystem, and you can use it for lots of different types of workloads including even uh, the cluster itself. So you can use the certificate and certificate res request resources directly and um, programmatically. You can use the CSI driver if you want to be able to have pretty seamless pod identities created and have those renewed. And how importantly, have the private key remain node local. You can also integrate Set Manager with a variety of different service meshes. We've got integration today with Linkerd, Istio, an open service mesh, and more to come. The webhooks, and also the control plane and node certificates as well. As said, in 1.3, or as of 1.3, we'll be supporting the Kubernetes certificates API. And we're looking for many more use cases. So if you have some ideas or you want to become getting involved, please come and join us. Uh, Cert Manager Dev, Cert Manager uh, Slack channels, come and join us. I'm always really willing to hear of new ideas, feedback, and also have contributors come join us, help build it. So thanks to everyone. We're going to be available here now for some live Q&A after this session. It's been a pleasure being able to tell you a bit more about the project and the various different use cases that we're building, Cert Manager 4. Look forward to your questions. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.